understanding ISO, the key to capturing images in just about any lighting condition. Now in my previous couple of videos, I've covered off aperture and shutter speed. And today we're gonna to complete the exposure triangle and we're gonna focus a little bit on ISO. Now understanding ISO and knowing when and how to adjust it can make the difference between getting the shot and ending up with a complete dud, especially when you're shooting in more challenging uh, lighting conditions. Now, before we do jump into talking about ISO, reminder, you can head to my website, which is www.on3legs, it's with the number three, and you can download a copy of my camera setup checklist. Now it's free and a lot of people have found it really, really useful. So yeah, go and grab that for yourself if you want, uh, want a tool that's gonna help you set your camera up every single time you go out for a shoot. All right, so what is ISO? Well, back in the days of film, and I'm gonna probably give my age away a little bit here because I am from the days of film. Uh, when I first started shooting, there was digital camera wasn't a thing. Um, but back then we had to choose an ISO for a whole film. And usually I'd buy a film, would have been, I don't know, 24 or 36 exposures. And that's what I was stuck with until I finished that particular role. And so if I was going to go out and shoot something like sports, I'd grab an ISO 400 film. If I was going to go out into the sun, just taking general maybe family snaps or something, I'd grab an ISO 100 film. And if I wanted to be artsy, uh, I'd grab an ISO 800 black and white film to introduce you know, the arty grain look to my images. These days, uh, with digital, we can change ISO with pretty much, well, with every shot. We can even use auto ISO to allow the camera to make some decisions for us and optimize the ISO for each particular image we're taking. Just like in those days, back in the film days, ISO refers to the sensitivity of your camera's sensor to light. I mean, back then it was the sensitivity of the film, but now it refers to the, the sensitivity of your camera sensor to the light coming in through the lens. It's also measured the same way with numbers like 100, 200, 400, and and 800, et cetera, and on and on and on. And the lower numbers indicate less sensitivity and those higher numbers are indicating more sensitivity to light. And most digital cameras will have what's called a base ISO of like 100 or 200 and a top ISO of something as high as sometimes 25,600. Um, so it's important for us to understand how ISO affects our photos. So the first thing I think we need to talk about is exposure because that's why you might manipulate it over any other reason. And assuming that no other settings change, switching to a lower ISO will make the sensor less sensitive to light. So unless you're already on your base, you'll be able to go down lower and you'll be able to make it less sensitive to light, which will result in dark images. So it will reduce the exposure. Now this is ideal if you're out in bright conditions or if you wanna maintain image quality. Uh, and we'll talk more about that on, short, uh, on that shortly because ISO does affect overall image quality. A high ISO, let's say something like 1,600 or 2,500, it's going to increase the sensor sensitivity to light. And that's going to make your images a bit brighter. And this is really useful in lower light conditions, uh, but it can have some other side effects like introducing noise or graininess into your uh, into your photo. So that's why we do need to talk a bit about image quality because that is a... Uh, I guess a side effect of uh, having a higher ISO. Um, if you do have lower ISO settings, usually it would produce like a cleaner image. And when I say clean, it's gonna have less what they call noise or what you might see as graininess in your image, which is really good for, so those lower ISOs are good for when you can control the light or the light is pretty consistent and bright. So for example, if you're in a studio and you're using flash, then a low ISO is ideal. If you're outdoors in daylight shoots, a lower ISO is gonna be ideal as well. Um, that higher ISO setting, if you do have to put it up, can cause what's called noise, which is a weird terminology for it, but it's like um, grain in your images and it can really reduce the image quality. And that's why there's so many tools and software programs that are all about reducing that noise and they do a great job. It's just about getting rid of all the graininess. Um, now, having said all of that, though, modern cameras like my Nikon D850 and probably whatever you're shooting with can handle higher ISOs better than the older digital cameras did. And it allows for, you know, whatever you might call acceptable noise levels, even at higher settings. And that's going to depend on you as an individual as to what you think is acceptable. Um, but, you know, most of these cameras can shoot relatively high 
and still be acceptable. Not much noise there at all. And like I said, there's lots of software to help us remove those. Now, these videos that I've been putting together, I want to make sure there's some practical tips for using ISO. So um, let's just talk about some of the settings that you might use. And then at the very end, I'm going to give you an experiment you can do to really understand how your camera performs at different ISO settings so you can know the limitations of your camera and its sensor when it comes to ISO settings. But here's some practical things for you to think about. If you're shooting in bright conditions, just use a low ISO like 100 or 200 to maintain that image quality because you'll get the best image quality. I recommend always trying to use your camera's base ISO, not one of the settings below that. My Nikon D850, for example, has a base ISO of 64. And then below that, you can sort of go to these ones. It's called low one, low two, low three. And I never ever use these, you know, low settings, whatever they are. I always try and shoot at ISO 64, as this gives me the best image quality. Now, the downside of using it a low ISO is it's going to force me to shoot at slower shutter speeds because I've got to let more light in. Uh, in lower light conditions, I've got to go to the, sh the slower sh shutter speeds. And if I want to get the correct exposure, there's not many other choices if I want to use a lower ISO. Um, or I've got to use like a, a bigger aperture, which also has a lot of side effects as well. Um, if you want to understand more about the effects of changing shutter speed, uh, then you can check out my video that I did on how to choose the right shutter speed for creative control. There should be something up here somewhere for you to click on to go and check that video out. Um, but yeah, you are going to have to have a slower shutter speed if you're in lower light conditions and you want to keep your low ISO to avoid the, the noise and the grain. Um, in low light conditions, you're going to have to increase your ISO. So this is the, you know, that practical part. If you want to allow for a faster shutter speed or a smaller aperture, which is a bigger F number, uh, if you want those either the fast shutter speed or smaller aperture and you want to maintain those without underexposing your image, you're going to have to increase your ISO. But just be mindful of your noise or graininess and test your camera's limits to know how high you can go before it becomes unacceptable to you because I think that's um, you know that's a personal preference. Earlier I mentioned the exposure triangle and it consists of those three things, aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And balancing the exposure triangle is crucial and adjusting ISO is a key part. So if you can't achieve the desired exposure with aperture and shutter speed alone, adjusting the ISO is your pretty much your next step. Now when shooting handheld in low light conditions, uh, increasing that ISO will allow for faster shutter speeds and that's going to help you reduce camera shake. Now I I shoot most of my shots off of a tripod so it's not such a big deal but if you are doing handheld shooting then just bump your ISO up a bit and you'll see it'll make a big difference in the shutter speed that you can use. All right now I did mention before I wanted to give you a bit of an experiment that you could do. Um, this is going to help you learn really about the limitations of your camera. So a good test is uh, one night, I want you to head outside with your camera and just find any subject to shoot, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, choose aperture priority or AV or whatever it is on your camera. And I want you to select uh, a wide aperture like f2.8 or whatever. Just go to the widest one that your lens will allow because that, that'll make it easy to let as much light in as you can. And you're going to take a series of shots. And I want you to start at your base ISO. Now when you take the first shot, it might be at 64 or 100 or 200. Uh, you might find the shutter will be open for a second or two seconds because it's dark outside. Just hold it as steady as you can. We're not taking an award-winning shot here. We're just doing a bit of an experiment. Um, but I want you to start at that base ISO and then double the ISO for each shot of the exact same subject. For example, you'll start at ISO 200, then go to 400, then to 800, 1600, 3200 and so on until you reach your camera's maximum ISO, which is likely to be 25,600. Once you've finished that, go back inside, pop your memory card into your computer and download the images onto your computer. And you're going to see the difference in image quality from the first shot to the last shot in the graininess. Um, the other thing I want you to look at is check the EXIF data. That's the, the shot data from each uh, image that you can usually view on your camera. Um, look at that for each shot and you're going to see how increasing the ISO changes your shutter speed, gives you a faster shutter speed. And it's just a good exercise for you to really understand uh, you know, the effects that it's going to have overall on your shooting and uh, you know how it affects your things like your shutter speed, etc. Uh, and, the, and the end quality of your images. So to wrap this up, uh, a good idea to spend time experimenting with just different ISO settings in various lighting conditions to understand how your camera is going to perform and how to 
best balance ISO with aperture and shutter speed for you. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think if you do that, you're going to learn a bit more uh, just by practicing and seeing um, you know, how it affects the overall image quality, but also things like shutter speed and the apertures that you're able to shoot. Um, I hope you're finding these tips helpful. Uh, as you continue to refine your photography skills. You know, this is the third one of these videos I've brought out in this series. Um, I do send a Focus Friday email out every Friday to my uh, mail database. So if you want to be on that list as well to get the text version of any of these videos, you can jump over to on3legs.com which with the number three and you can uh, subscribe to anything there, download the checklist, do whatever you like, but just give me your details and you'll be on my, my email list and you'll get the weekly email called Focus Fridays. Uh, which is uh, a lot further ahead than what these videos are. So you'll be getting new tips uh, as a, so that, that are different to these tips. So there you go. Um, now, just to wrap up, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, or you need any further assistance with adjusting your ISO, uh, feel free to comment below. I'd be more than happy to do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. Now, all that is left for you to do is to get out there and take some photos. See ya.